So the other day I was on Twitter and I saw this post and it said, why didn't these three guys go mainstream? Or actually said these three guys had a chance to be mainstream. And the three guys in the picture happened to be Summers, Autumn, and Ken. So that's kind of what today's video is about. Why didn't the members of Slay World go mainstream? And even like a lot of the people they were affiliated with because there were some pretty talented people. And uh, I'm just going to go over um, why Summers, Autumn, Can Can, Goonie, Isaiah TG never went mainstream. Because if you were a fan of these guys in 2019, I'm not going to lie, like some of them I never really thought would go mainstream. Like no offense, I never really thought Goonie was going mainstream even though I really liked his music. Or Can Can, I never really saw it like that either. But Autumn and Summers, they definitely had, especially Autumn, he definitely had potential to go mainstream. So anyways, let's get into it. Starting off with Summers. All right, if you don't know, or actually most of you guys know, Summers, he kind of started off getting big with the whole plug and B sound. And then 2019, he had like this ghost reverb rap sound. I don't know, however you want to like describe it. And uh, he was getting a lot of attention for that. That was like probably one of his best eras or whatever you want to call it. His aura was up there. I feel like one underrated way or reason why Summers never went mainstream is because he switched up his sound so, so, so much. I feel like back in the day, he was really consistent with this plug and B sound, like really, really, really consistent, even though that type of stuff can never go mainstream. You see how big plug and B is right now? Like imagine if Summers, I'm not saying only drop plug and B like crazy, but if he really, really, really focused on plug and B and just try to make the best plug and B, he could probably or he probably would have went crazy. And I'm not going to pretend like he didn't drop a plug and b album like almost every year but over the past four years he switched from plug and b to another sound went back to like some other sound switched to plug and b went to another sound switched to plug and b and i feel like that just creates like this weird pattern where your fans like i don't know they like some of your music but they don't like some of your music and let me explain so in 2019 when summers first started doing more rap stuff people were actually messing with that. i liked it a lot but then over time, he started doing like a little more mainstream stuff. And this is more 21, 2021, 2022, 2023, really 2022 and 2023 when he drops some, like albums like Fallen Raven. I actually really liked Fallen Raven. It was like half plug and B, half, I don't know, a little more mainstream. I won't say R&B, but you know what I'm saying. And this is where Summer is really messed up in my opinion. It's in two places. Number one, he didn't put all of his music on streaming platforms. Like, and it's still not. There's like summers archived and they're like they're like two summers archived and i don't know if you know this but at one point his archive pages on spotify had more monthly listeners than he did on spotify which is just crazy uh, if you didn't know in 2019 summers signed a deal with victor victor that he's no longer in i think recently uh, you know when he bought his Maybach for like half a million it's because he signed to 10k projects but basically due to those label situations i guess he just never uh, was able to or never cared to put out any of his older music i think some of it he just didn't like like i don't think he likes bell world or any of those old plug and b projects like that and that's why they've been consistently getting taken down by him and his label and because of that his monthly listeners have suffered so you know it's kind of hard to build up your catalog as an artist if most of your catalog isn't available on the streaming platforms that 99% of the population use like let's be honest no one really uses soundcloud i use it a lot but you, know, you probably use it a lot but most people don't you know that's really gonna hurt you and uh, you can look at someone like autumn autumn has strategically released all of his stuff on streaming platforms and you can just look at the numbers they speak for themselves like a lot of those songs have tons of plays he's definitely making a lot of bread off of them i can't imagine how much money summer's lost now that's just the first reason the other reason is this dude like the way he switched up his sound he went from like okay this guy's on like the new he's really like pioneering something new like plug and b and he still is but like half the time he's on this weird not weird he's like trying to be like a, a louisiana street rapper and what's funny is none of his fans like i mean i'm not gonna lie like the songs are good sometimes like he can put hard stuff out just his fans don't really mess with it like that you know what i mean i feel like most summers fans do not want to hear him rapping like he's nba young boy or just any other louisiana street rapper it just doesn't make sense to me there is like a balance though sometimes you have to you know um you have to experiment for example when he releases album ghost that album got a ton of hate back in my ways also got a ton of hate but that was a, that was a good project but ghost got tons and tons and tons of hate like people were like yo all the beats sound the same his mixing is trash just put out a bunch of bs but there were actually some good songs on there it's just that when people don't have something to expect from you it's just hard for them to you know be excited about some new project truth Especially when you're cycling between plug and B and and hopping on NBA young boy type beats. But anyways, that's it for summers. I feel like it's pretty concise. There's not much else. Also, there's some allegations, you know, um, I'd say that, but I wouldn't really say that's like massive reasons. Like the other things are more 
support. Anyways, the next artist who had a chance to be mainstream but didn't go mainstream was Autumn. Autumn Arwick, Twin Uzis, whatever you want to call him. If you didn't know, back in the day, Autumn was going crazy on Plug and B just with Summers. He was doing his thing. Like I said, he made the smart move and, you know, stayed independent all the way until like 2021 and all of his stuff literally almost all of his music is on streaming platforms you know good for him i think at one point he even took all his music off of soundcloud because he wasn't getting paid for his uh music and autumn is really about the bag like he's been driving clothes he's been doing all sorts of stuff i think in january of 2024 he's already made a million or something i don't know that's just what he said not not for me but he's definitely doing very 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 well for himself financially the funniest part is he doesn't even call himself rich or i mean he's he's always flexing but like you know summers is always like man look at my electricity bill look at this i'm i guarantee you autumn has more money than him. but making a ton of money doesn't mean you want mainstream and why didn't autumn go mainstream because autumn out of all of the members in slay world had the most mainstream sounds so people were always like man i feel like one day autumn could go mainstream and uh they were right. He really did have that sound. If you look at, listen to some of his projects from like 2021, you can tell he was trying to go mainstream. I remember in 2020 when he dropped Ills Verant, like that song really showed me and a lot of people that, wow, Autumn can really, uh, he can go, uh, he has that mainstream sound. And I guess he tried for a little bit. Uh, you know, he dropped Solitary, which is more rap. He dropped Antagonist, which that wasn't really like mainstream it was kind of him hopping on like the yeet wave which i think he thought would make him go mainstream but most fans didn't really like it i i kind of liked it it was all right there's some cool songs on there and then he just kept dropping plug and b which was good because that's what his fans wanted and he was one of the only ones who was like really doing it right and just making good plug and b because there's a ton of like clone music out there his album midnight club that was also like all right I, a lot of people said oh man this is like the best music ever oh my god i didn't think it was that crazy but you know, there was some hate for that too. People were like, yo, why are you trying to be a Walmart Drake? What, what's with this new sound? But I think there there was a lot of potential there. I don't know if uh, you guys paid attention, but when he dropped One Way, One Way is still his most popular song on YouTube. Look at how many views it has right now. It has 7 million views on the music video and 4 million on the audio. Of course, it was being teased forever. There are other reasons why it became so big. But one of those reasons was it had like... I guess the guitar was really like synthetic and stuff, but it had a very mainstream appeal to it. You know what I mean? And if you go on to Spotify, it's also his most um, streamed song, 46 million, but still the same at a close second, 42 million. And he only has 1.1 million monthly listeners, which if you look at Summers, everyone dogs on Summers for not going mainstream, but Summers has 1 million monthly listeners. And most of his music is not on streaming platform. But I feel like Summers was always like way bigger than Autumn to me. So why didn't Autumn go mainstream? I think he just didn't have what it takes, to be honest. Because it's not easy to drop like R&B. Because when you're dropping R&B, you're competing with like real R&B or other, you know, mainstream artists. Not just R&B, just like whatever you'd categorize Autumn's mainstream music as. And I feel like he just had to really lean into it and he couldn't do that. And also do the plug and B stuff that he's doing. And I feel like he'd rather just drop that because that's what he's really good at. So I feel like it makes sense. Even though songs like One Way were cool, I feel like those mainstream songs he drops or type songs he drops more serve as just like a treat to his fans rather than, okay, let's try and blow up with this. I think he's kind of past that. I don't think he cares anymore. But yeah, that's why I think Autumn didn't uh, ever go mainstream. I think he just never gave it a full shot. Like he never really, I think he had like a, a test deal with Victor Victor when he was dropping One Way and that other EP of his uh, no, um, Not Much Left. And I think he just never wanted to like fully commit to try and go mainstream like that. Because you know, he's already a big enough artist that can make a ton of money. I think he didn't care. That's what I think. The next artist who didn't go mainstream is none other than Can Can. I feel like it's pretty uh, obvious why Can Can didn't ever go mainstream. Number one, his music was just too niche to ever go that mainstream until it like blew out of the water or something on TikTok. You know what I mean? Like Heats did. He was very consistent from like 2019 to 2021. Can Can was so, so, so consistent. He dropped a lot of stuff that could be considered mainstream rap. Like if you go on his genius, right? You see the projects he's dropped. Everything from like Fast Cars and Codeine to like Way Too Geeked is pretty solid i'm not gonna lie he had some good eps before that too like can can um can gianni hashtag before can three like you know he had a lot of good projects he had a lot of great singles you know but he just never i don't think anyone ever thought can can was gonna go mainstream to be honest so i don't i, I won't really say like he failed or he didn't do what he could have done or he did anything wrong to be honest because he's doing more than fine like i said in this other video I think that he just made whatever type of music he wanted to make. If you look at his biggest songs, they're like Woke Up, 
None to Me, GTA, some of his songs The Yeet, like X and Oxy, F the Clout, Going to Hell. Oh, I remember everyone loved that Can Can song. That was like Can Can's fans' favorite song, but you know, he had his own or he still has his own dedicated fan base and he's a pretty big rapper, you know, like you look at his monthly listeners on Spotify. I don't even know how this is a thing. He has 2.4 million, <laughs> dude. He, he has more than Summers and Autumn combined, which is kind of wild to me. I don't know if you know this, but back in like 20, like early 2019, 2018 even, like Can Can was trash. Like his music was not good at all. He was just, uh, he was just a producer. Like his vocal preset was so messed up. Like, and every single song he'd be like, He'd talk about Chrome Hearts and just like random other designer brands. Like he wouldn't really say anything in his music. And he just had like the same kind of lazy flow over like those Eddie Gianni type beats. And that was like a thing. And it was cool. And he eventually found a sound with that. But you know, his improvement is already a lot. I feel like 2.2 million monthly listeners. That's like crazy for Can Can. So I feel like out of all three of these, he actually did the best because he took what he got or he you know, he started the latest and I guess technically he's the biggest now. Not really. Summers is the biggest and Autumn is the second biggest and he's the third. But like, I guess if you look at Spotify monthly listeners, he's the most popular or whatever, you know? And I feel like you can't even really make the TikTok song excuse because both Summers and Autumn both have songs that went crazy on TikTok. So, you know, it is what it is. So why didn't Can Can go mainstream? I feel like his sound just didn't fit. Just not the right, right thing, you know? Like there's only space for one yeet, really. And Yeet's not even doing that sound, so you know, there can't be that many like experimental SoundCloud rappers that are doing numbers like that. Now I'm gonna go over some of the smaller members that, and I'm not gonna talk about everyone. I'll talk about some of the small ones. Okay, fine. Alexander Prey. I'm not gonna lie, like he had some good music, but uh, he just, I don't know, he's not really. He after Slay World fell apart, he just wasn't really connected with them, and they kind of fell off. Frank's Last Day. Uh, I think Last Day is like their collective now. Instead of Slay World, he's still cool with Isaiah TG. He dropped some cool plug and beat stuff. I wish he just stuck with like the plug, plug and beat. He has a really good EP with um, 30 Nick. Really good EP with 30 Nick. Go check that out. He has some other good music. Cool R&B artist, but you know, I wouldn't say he fell off. He's just doing all right. Then we got Goonie. Goonie, he was, uh, he was actually like putting up some serious numbers. Every time he dropped from like 2019 to 2021, even 2018 ish, cause he has some old songs with like um, numbers and stuff that became really big, but uh, yeah, he just never, ever, ever went that hard. Like, he just doesn't drop. Like, even now, like, everyone will be like, yo, Goonie, when are you going to drop? Oh, wait, that was my roommate. He just uh, l I'll closed the door, scared me for a second. And he just, like, never dropped. Even now, he has, like, a wife. Or not a wife. He has, like, a his girl's pregnant. He's just got other priorities in life. Like, music has never been the thing where he's been like, man, I need to go crazy with this. Dude, I need to run it up. You know, he just never... Uh, he just never did it. I guess he just never cared that much. So that's why he didn't go mainstream. Because he's very talented. You know, and he could hop on all sorts of types of beats. Types of beats. Like, he would hop on, like, those guitar, gunna type beats. He'd hop on everything. Yeah, Goonie, I wouldn't say it's wasted potential. But he could definitely be bigger. I'm not even saying mainstream. He just deserves more than what he's got right now. But I think he's content with where he's at. So that's fine. And finally, actually, no. There's one other guy. This guy named Endo. I don't know if you know about him. He was more of a producer for Slay World. But he was also an artist. And he's still, like, super small. I'm not gonna lie, like, no one really knows most if you ask most of these fans these days like they don't even know who endo is you know what i mean uh, and there's one more isaiah tg but i'm just gonna keep it short because uh i don't know he doesn't really want to be associated with them but he was he was part of slay world for a while if you didn't know can't can actually begged him to be in the slay world group chat or something he went on an interview and just spazzed on him but basically isaiah tg i feel like he never went mainstream because his sound is just way 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 too niche i think that's fine i feel like having a niche artist with music that's very 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 unique cool and uh yeah isaiah tg is actually like one of my my favorite artists like plastic that's one of my most played songs 2023 not even close not even sorry it's it, i don't know why i said not even close it's one of my most like, really good he just has music that hits like crazy really cool sound and uh lastly i want to say it's not really a bad thing that any of these artists didn't go mainstream like it would be kind of weird like imagine if all these guys went mainstream and started making like r b or some super basic rap i feel like no one would really mess with them like that you know what i mean so yeah, it's probably a good thing that they didn't go super mainstream or anything. They just stuck to their own thing. But anyways, thanks for watching. Have a nice day and uh, see you tomorrow.